So what are psychedelics? Simply put, these are substances that create a hallucinogenic effect and limit the control over the environment which surrounds you. Oftentimes, they're used to expand consciousness, increase self-awareness, and alter universal perception. Psychedelics have a history in ancient use, with some use that even continues to this day, while other ceremonies have obviously ceased. Now, psychedelics are not limited to traditional spiritual or recreational use, but in fact also have a history in medicine. And it is in part due to this history which is leading to the increased interest today. Now, the term psychedelic was coined by Humphrey Osmond, who was a psychiatrist in the mid-1900s. The term was popularized for two reasons. Firstly, it moved away from previous terms which carried negative connotations. And secondly, the term psychedelic means mind manifesting. To Osmond and other psychiatrists at the time, this was the most accurate way to describe the psychedelic experience. Now, what's exciting about these substances is that even with the current surge of approved clinical trials, we're just at the start of uncovering their full potential in medicine. Psychedelics are showing how they're capable in treating illnesses such as depression, addiction, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Early studies have shown great promise, but due to lack of following the scientific process, they have been dismissed and criticized. In spite of a damaged history by poor research methods, lack of funding, or reputable backing, psychedelics are making quite the interesting comeback today in the scientific community and culture as a whole. Now, the specific substances which we'll be focusing on today are 3,4-methylene-dioxymethamphetamine, MDMA for short, lysergic acid dithalamide, LSD, psilocybin, ayahuasca, and mescaline. Now, all of these substances can be found on the Government of Canada website with an accurate and unbiased description of their health effects from short-term to long-term. All of these substances, since the passing of the Con Controlled Drugs and Substances Act in 1996 in Canada, have all been placed into restrictive scheduling. Now, you might be wondering what are schedules. Well, schedules are a hierarchical classification for the substances in the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act, with Schedule 1 being the most restrictive and Schedule 4 being the least. All of these substances are Schedule 3, except for MDMA, which is Schedule 1. Now, as you would imagine, these restrictions had made it quite difficult to research these substances. So as mentioned before, psychedelics are not new. In fact, there's an interesting juxtaposition between their previous acceptance and their demonization in the mid-1900s. There's even evidence of psychedelic use which dates back to as far as 5,000 years ago. Dr. Ronald Segal, who is a research professor at UCLA, states that the human urge to intoxicate is so strong that it is the fourth most primal instinct after hunger, thirst, and sex. Now, unfortunately, much evidence of ancient psychedelic usage has been destroyed. Nonetheless, using radiocarbon dating and alkaloid analysis, Hisham El Saidi of the University of Malay and his co-researchers analyzed two samples of peyote buttons, which are a psychedelic. And they found these samples to date back to as early as 3,780 BC. Looking through the relics of indigenous cultures, it is clear to see that these samples meant much more than simple recreational use and extended to a connection with the divine. Indigenous cultures made paintings on rocks, temples, and other effigies of mushrooms, such as the mushroom people we see in this photo. Furthermore, the word for psilocybin mushrooms in ancient Aztec dialect directly translates to flesh of God. Now, the early 1900s saw great medical promise for psychedelic research. But the way science should be conducted changed around the 1960s, and these previous positive studies simply could not be replicated under these new standards. Early research was just that, too early. Scientists were extremely excited about how psychedelics can help with addiction, anxiety, and depression, and ultimately had skewed and biased reports. Now, this ultimately led to a demonized view of psychedelics, where the scientists often had their patients who took the psychedelics and they would take them with them and combine that with the horrific anecdotes of suicide as to using psychedelics. And this led to the banning of all these substances in the 1970s by the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act in the U.S. Now, n regardless of all of this, they're making quite an interesting comeback today. In 2017, the, MD the FDA designated MDMA as breakthrough therapy. This is essentially a grant that prioritizes review of substances which previously presented positive studies. Now, the studies were conducted by the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. In phase two of their trials, they found that 61% of their volunteers who previously had chronic treatment-resistant PTSD no longer experienced any symptoms of PTSD. And after a year, that number then grew to 68%. It is estimated that by 2021, if efficacy of MDMA is continued to be demonstrated, that the FDA will legalize MDMA as a prescription therapy drug 
for those who are struggling with PTSD. In 2017, at John Hopkins University, they used psilocybin therapy sessions to help those struggling with a tobacco addiction. Now, they found at the six-month follow-up that 80% of their participants were still smoking abstinent. And at the 12-month follow-up, 67% were still smoking abstinent, and 87% rated their psychedelic experience to be one of their top five most meaningful life experiences. Now, this is quite interesting because it is said that out of people who attempt to quit smoking today, only 6% will be able to do so. A study conducted by Michael P. Bugenschitz at the University of New Mexico used psilocybin for treating participants who were struggling with alcoholism. They first conducted sessions without the use of psilocybin and found minimal response in their patients. However, once the psilocybin-assisted therapy sessions began, they found large gains reported in follow-ups up to 36 weeks later. LSD and psilocybin are also very promising when it comes to dealing with anxiety as it pertains to a terminal illness. Peter Gasser in 2014 used participants who tested positive for anxiety using the state trait anxiety inventory test. Now, after LSD sessions, they found that 77% of their participants experienced a lower amount of anxiety, while 66% experienced a rise in quality of life. Now, James Rucker did a meta-analysis of many previous psychedelic studies, and he concluded that psychedelics should be re-examined for their use in modern, in modern studies for treating unipolar mood disorders. Rucker and his colleagues believe that psychedelics can treat illnesses such as depression and anxiety. And this is further backed up by a study conducted at UC Davis, which used LSD and MDMA and found that these substances can increase neuronal branches in your brain and thus help dealing with things such as depression and anxiety. Charles Grob of Harbor UCLA Medical Center also did psilocybin therapy sessions, and they found that their participants experienced less anxiety and they also found that they had an improvement in mood using the Beck Depression Inventory Test. A study at UBC Okanagan used 1,266 participants in an online survey which assessed their emotional regulation. They found that users of LSD and psilocybin were half as likely to engage in partner violence. Now, the rise of popularity in these substances can be attributed to the positive studies which are coming out today. Now, we can take a look at the rise of popularity for the term of psychedelics using Google's interest index. And this by no means is a serious scientific experiment, but it is a fun experiment to look at for yourself nonetheless. We can see how since 2004, in the inception of the interest index to 2018, 2018 has the highest interest for the term psychedelic. Now, representation of these substances in media is very important because people typically do not sit around re reading academic journals. An example of this could be the Joe, Joe Rogan podcast, which ranks consistently in the top three podcasts in the world. Now, the podcast talks about a variety of different subjects, but usually has a reoccurring theme of psychedelics, and no doubt people tune in to, to talk about and listen how the way they talk about psychedelics. There's also a rising popularity of many channels on YouTube which talk about psychedelics specifically. They talk about how to test your substances to ensure purity and authenticity and the risks involved with taking these substances as well as the risks that you should acknowledge before you decide to consume these substances. Another popular channel is called the Drugs Labs in the Netherlands, and they actually consume these substances in order to take you through the experience of psychedelics if you choose to use these substances yourself. Studies are important because they can challenge our pre-existing ideologies on these substances. As an emerging youth in all of Canada, some questions arise as to why the repercussions of using psychedelics is so large. The fact that they're risky substances is absolutely true, but so are tobacco and alcohol products. And for tobacco and alcohol products, they are, have been found to be addictive and also can be fatal. And as opposed to certain psychedelics which have been found to not be addictive and there haven't been fatalities from a single dose of psychedelics. But this should not be a competition about which substance is more risky. It is assumed that once you become the age of majority in whatever country you're in, you're able to make accurate assessments of the risk and take responsibility for that risk. Using these substances should be a personal choice and not one that is dictated by others. Furthermore, legalizing these substances would allow for safer use and an overall societal destigmatization for more open conversation. Now, we currently live in a time where information is readily available. We can see how psychedelics can be more effective than 
previous methods which we have known for dealing with illnesses like addiction, depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. And I hope that this talk has really challenged your pre-existing beliefs. And before I end, I'd like to leave you on this note. Suicides have overtaken car accidents as the leading cause of injury-related death in the U.S. And I'd like to ask, where can psychedelics fit into this picture? Thank you.